By far, one of the most requested videos on my channel is how do you get your smooth motion blur. And today, I'm gonna share all of my secrets. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to create the best motion blur in the game. And the best part is, Jake Whip and I have teamed up and we've turned this into a one-click template. And trust me, this is one you have to see. And thank you to Audio for sponsoring this video. Let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna be working on this intro sequence right here with the speed ramps and the effects. I'm not gonna show you how to do these speed ramps and effects because I have plenty of other tutorials showing you exactly how to do that and I'll link them right now. But what this intro clip is currently missing is motion blur. We have absolutely no motion blur. Everything is perfectly crisp as you're going through and it just looks a little bit jagged. So let's get into it. To start, we're gonna go up to the effects panel and we're going to add an adjustment clip and drag it over top of your clip. And now you're going to want to center it over the cut where your speed ramps are happening. So we're gonna go roughly right there. That is sort of the center of the adjustment clip right over top of the speed ramp. And then we're gonna head into the Fusion page. And trust me, this is gonna be really easy. So you don't need to know all of Fusion to make this work. And I also wanna just let you know that this does work with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So you're good on that front. So to start, you're gonna grab your media one, which is this guy right here, with it selected and outlined in red, you're gonna hit shift space and add an optical flow node and hit enter. Now you're gonna hit shift space again and add a vector motion blur node just like so. And bang, you already have the motion blur. I told you it was really, really simple. But other DaVinci Resolve YouTubers have done this exact same thing, but I'm just gonna take it a step further that just makes it look a whole lot better. First, I'm gonna show you a problem we're gonna run into. So if we go back to the edit page, you can see that we start with absolutely no motion blur, and then when we go one frame forward, all of the motion blur is turned on, which doesn't look good. And a couple other people have sort of tried to outsmart this and tried to fade on the clip just like so, so that the intensity of the motion blur only lands over the highest speed ramp portion of your clip. But I'm gonna show you where I have problems with this because if we go right in the middle of the fade, uh, we just have this opacity ghosting look. So instead of the motion trills starting to get longer as the motion blur goes on, we just have this faded look. I don't think this looks really good. You can see that there's a bit of motion blur, but it's mostly just this ghosting. So if we turn this off and on, it's just this ghosting look and it's not truly fading on the intensity of the effect. So we're not gonna fade this clip. We're gonna do it a different way and we're gonna do that inside of Fusion. So let's go to Fusion. Let's start on the very first frame of our adjustment clip, which is right here. Let's go to our vector motion blur. Let's set a keyframe on scale and set it down to zero. Now let's go to the last frame, set a keyframe on scale and also leave it at zero. And now we're gonna go to the center of our clip, which we're gonna be able to see it because it is an adjustment clip, which is right here. So between frame 17 and 18, uh, it flips between the two clips and we're gonna increase the motion blur to whatever we want. So I'm gonna put my scale uh, we'll just leave it at one for the sake of this tutorial and we're getting closer. So now it's fading from zero to one to zero. That's where we're going, but it's still not very smooth. So we're going to have to open the spline editor. Let's enable vector motion blur and the scale icon and then hit this zoom to fit button so that it fills the entire frame. Let's grab all of our keyframes and hit S. Now with this handle selected, I'm going to hold control and turn this all the way down just like so. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other handle like that. And now let's see how that looks back on the edit page. And this is gonna be very computer intensive, so you're gonna have to turn on render cache, which just lets your computer simulate the images so that you can view them back in real time. So let's make sure that we go into playback, render cache, and make sure that it's set to smart or user. And once this red line has turned blue over the adjustment clip, you can take a look at it and look at that. We have smooth motion blur. So let's just take a look at this frame by frame. So obviously right in the center, it looks good. The pieces of the frame that are moving the least, which is obviously right in the center because the camera is locked on right there. There's not that much motion blur, but the sides where the camera is moving a ton, obviously there is a lot of motion blur. But if we go backwards frame by frame, look at this. So we have absolutely no fading on or ghosting of this uh, motion blur. So as you can see, let's just take a look at this door here. It starts crispy and then slowly the motion blur increases, not just the opacity of the motion blur. And it looks really, really good. But let's quickly head back into the Fusion page and I'm gonna show you just a little bit more refinement that you have over this motion blur. So in the optical flow node, you do have a whole lot of options which lets you just change the tracking of the optical flow. 
I choose to leave this alone because if you mess with it too much, it's actually gonna look pretty bad. Instead, just on the vector motion blur, I just prefer increasing or decreasing the scale. So in this case, we could go crazy and increase it to four. Uh, and then back on the edit page, take a look at this. You can see that we have some really intense motion blur, but it still holds up and looks really, really good. And as I mentioned earlier, this effect is pretty intensive on your computer. So if you have a slower computer, it might not even be able to properly render this. But don't worry, the template that Jake and I have put together actually uses some scaling features inside of DaVinci Resolve to make it over twice as fast as the original motion blur method that I just showed you right now. But before we get into that, I wanna show you one more method of motion blur that just might save the day. Because if we take a look at this next transition here, we're zooming through the clip. So we actually have two clips to deal with individually. And the pixel speed of each video in this clip are moving at different speeds. So the TV shot is moving at a different rate than the shot inside of the TV is. And when you apply optical flow and vector motion blur, you're gonna get some weird artifacting that's not gonna work really well. So to do the second effect, again, we're gonna grab an adjustment clip. We're gonna line it up sort of over the center of that transition just like so. And again, we're gonna head into Fusion Page. And this method of motion blur is a little bit fake, uh, but maybe I wanna call it simple because it is quite useful and often I do end up using it for specific scenarios. So instead of adding optical float, we're gonna hit shift space and add a directional blur. Now there's gonna be two that show up. This bottom one here is the studio version, which is paid. So we're not gonna select that. We're gonna select the free version right up top here, just like so. We're gonna go back a couple frames just so we can see what we're looking at. And we're gonna change the mode from linear to zoom. And now if we increase this length, you can see that we're getting some zoom motion blur in and out. So let's increase the strength to maximum. Let's go to our transition frame, which is right here. Let's set a keyframe on length. Let's go back to the start, set it down to zero, and let's go to the end of the clip and also set it at zero. Now we're gonna go into the spline editor just like before, grab our directional blur and length, hit zoom to fit, grab all the frames, hit control A and then S, hit control to drag this handle down, just like the optical flow transition just before, just like so. And if we take a look at this back on the edit page, we still have some nice motion trails and some nice motion blur in between the shots. Uh, that is just a simple zoom blur, but because it's animating in with this curve, it actually still looks really, really good. And with all of these, we can just drag these adjustment clips over top of the other transitions, just like so. And now you have motion blur for all of your transitions. And now I just wanna take a second to highlight today's video sponsor, and that's Audio. And if you don't know what Audio is, they are a music licensing platform that offers incredible music and a really good selection of sound effects. And they just came out with a really sweet update when it comes to downloading stems, and that's Elements 2.0. So if you don't know what a stem is, it's pretty much an individual track of a song. So think the bass or the vocals or just the instrumental or the synths, pretty much every individual element of the music. And audio with every single one of their songs lets you download an individual stem so you can completely master the music exactly to your liking. And if you want even more Control, you can now also filter songs by key to find the exact song that you're looking for. And speaking of finding songs, Audio offers Hans AI as well as Link Match AI. And both of those features are game changing. So Hans AI is pretty much a chat GPT search, but for music. So you can just input what you want your video to be about or the style of your video, and it'll spit out some really good song options for you. And then Link Match AI, you grab your Spotify or YouTube link of your favorite song, put it into Audio, and then you get a licensed track of the exact same style and vibe. Now, as always, Audio has given me an incredible discount code for you. So if you're looking to get 70% off the Pro Plan, which gives you access to all of the AI features, that's just $60. Make sure that you use code VANBEEK at checkout. And if you don't want the hassle of a subscription, they also have a lifetime plan, which is discounted $300 with my code VANBEEK199. And then you get the lifetime package for $199. You get unlimited access to music and new music that's added weekly for life. There's never another payment, just a one-time payment of $199. So at the bare minimum, I'd recommend that you at least go and check out their music to see if it will match your needs and make sure that you use my discount code at checkout. Now let's get back to the video. And quickly, if you wanted some directional motion blur instead of the zoom motion blur with the uh, simpler method, just like so, this clip is sort of going from side to side. It's also zooming in a little bit, but it is a good clip to demonstrate this on. Let's go back into Fusion and let's change the type from zoom 
to linear. And now you can see we're getting directional motion blur. Let's turn down the scale a little bit, just like so. And now, as you can see, we have a side to side motion blur instead of just a zoom motion blur. But what happens when we have to retime our motion blur? So what if this transition is actually shorter than the adjustment clip? So the speed ramping is maybe only happening from here to here and not this full width. So we don't want this motion blur to be as long. Well, if you adjust the timing of your adjustment clip, just like so, that is not going to adjust the curve inside of Fusion. So you're going to have to manually adjust that every single time. Because if we look at the scale here, at the start of this clip, we are already at an intense amount of motion blur and same thing at the end of the clip because these keyframes are not moving over. So you'd have to manually adjust this every single time. Whereas the template with Jake Whip is gonna take care of all of that and it's going to make all of the adjustments available for you on the edit page. And I'm excited to announce that I'm gonna be running a sale on this template for the first month after publishing this video. So the template is gonna be priced at $35 and you get the Motion Blur Pro and the Motion Blur Simple. But for the first month is gonna be discounted down to $20 so that you can get your hands on this incredible tool. Right at the end of this video, I'll show you exactly how to purchase and download this template, but let me show you exactly how it works. So to start, you're still going to grab an adjustment clip and drag it over your clip, but don't worry, this is going to be really reusable and easy to reuse in different projects. So on the adjustment clip, let's go into our effects tab and search for motion blur. So we're gonna apply Motion Blur Pro to this adjustment clip, just like so. And now once it's applied, it's pretty much done everything that we just built out inside of the Fusion page, but we have some extra controls on the inspector tab here. So not only can we change the curve if we want the curve to be maybe let's say a little bit more aggressive than it is right now, just like it was in the Fusion page, we can increase the motion blur strength just right there. Uh, and the most important part of this feature is we can retime it and it's still going to work. So this spike here, this easing is retiming to work with the adjustment clip. And as you can see, the motion blur gradually turns on and it is still a smooth transition. So it retimes, you have custom controls over the curve, you have a motion blur strength slider to increase or decrease the amount of motion blur. And then lastly, you also have this mode. So you have the transition mode, which if you're doing speed ramping, you're gonna be using most of the time. But if you just want constant motion blur in a clip, let's say it's a racing clip or a drone shot or something like that, let's say we'll use this clip right here. Instead of having it on transition, we can change it to constant. We can leave a little bit of an animation length on so it still turns off and on at the end of the video or you could turn that off by just inputting zero. And now if we take a look at this, this clip still has constant motion blur throughout. So it's not just a transition, it's just constant motion blur. And it's still dependent on how much the frame is moving. So at the start, it's not moving a lot. So there's not a lot of motion blur but at the end it's moving a whole lot more. So there's a whole lot more motion blur, but that's not all when you purchase the motion blur package because you actually get motion blur simple as well. So for those of you on a weaker computer, or if you're doing more advanced effects like this TV transition, you can drag the adjustment clip over top of that. I've deleted the original motion blur pro and added motion blur simple, which now we're just looking at the directional or zoom blur. And in this case, we're zooming into the TV. So let's switch the mode from direction to zoom. And as you can see, we're getting that same curve as before. It's zooming into the TV. We can increase the strength of that motion blur a little bit. Boom, we have some nice motion blur just like that. It doesn't need to render cache at all because it's super light on your actual computer. But if you're doing a transition sort of like this one here, where it's sort of zooming, but it's also going side to side, what you could actually do is drag this adjustment clip over there and change the zoom blur from zoom to back to direction. And now we're getting a side to side motion blur. So we can decrease the scale a little bit, just like so and we have sort of this side to side motion blur, but you could actually layer them to get a bit of both worlds. So if we add this to the top now, so I'm holding alt and dragging up, we could change this one to zoom, and now we're getting some zoom blur and some motion blur at the same time. And we're actually getting a really good transition. And once you've had your settings dialed in and you don't wanna recreate these adjustment clips for every single project, you can just drop them inside of a power bin. So to really quickly do that, we can go back to the media pool. We can go into power bins. Let's create a new bin and let's call it motion blur 
Uh, I'll call it two because I already have one. And now we can take these adjustment clips and drag them into our bin. We can rename them. So this is Motion Blur Pro and drag in our simple, which is Motion Blur Simple. And now when we need to reuse this across multiple projects, these will show up instead of your power bins. You can just drag them onto your clip line them up over your cut just like so, and we instantly have motion blur. So that's the simple, and let's drag the pro on right here, and that's the pro, and it looks phenomenal. Now, generally with my motion blur, because even with the scaling features inside of DaVinci Resolve, it's still gonna be a little bit slower. I do it all at the end, so a little bonus tip here is I just disable that video track until I'm ready to export. So I'll do all of my edits, then I'll add my motion blur, then I'll disable my motion blur and finish color grading the video or whatever else I have to do. And then before I export, I turn it right back on. And when you purchase the plugin, Jake has made it incredibly easy to download inside of DaVinci Resolve. So you'll get this DRFX file right here. All you're gonna have to do is double click it. And once you double click it, it'll open a prompt inside of DaVinci Resolve asking to install the template. In my case, it says overwrite because I already have it installed. But once you hit install, it'll install into your effects tab right there and you'll be able to use it instantly. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate the support on the channel and thank you to Audio for sponsoring today's video. Again, if you're looking for good music and sound effects, be sure to check them out. And if you have any ideas for future tutorials or things that you want to learn inside of DaVinci Resolve, make sure you drop that down below in the comments. And a quick reminder that Jesus loves you. See ya.